Happy hump day, baby. How's it going? Have you seen the side yard spruce up? Go scooch over and go watch it. It's so good. I am a little hungover. The hair is wild, okay? I went to an event last night and I got hit on by Polly Shore. Is that hilarious? Only in LA. Let's get into it. Hello world, come inside. The Dear Juju Podcast. To see ya. Welcome back, you beautiful bitch. If anyone has not told you today, first of all, you're doing fucking great. Like, seriously, look at you. You know, you're doing inner work, you're healing, you're standing up for yourself, you're letting go of relationships that don't serve you. This is great. I'm proud of us, okay? And we're accepting all those parts of us that we don't like. Just accept them, okay? And that goes for me too, because, you know, sometimes I get out this house because I've been in here with my kids for so much. I drink a little too much. I say a little too much. And then I wake up the next day going, wow, I was a lot last night. But you know what? I'd rather be a lot than this trend that we have to talk about. I don't usually talk about trends, okay? I'm the trendsetter. I'm the influencer's influencer. I don't want to talk about other people's trends, but we got to talk about it. This might be a bit controversial, but I am team anti-demure, okay? Now, there's a trend, very demure, very mindful. Always, you know, and I think he, I'm a fan of him and what he's saying is so true. Basically, don't be a banshee. Basically, don't show your ass, all of that stuff, which is really funny. But um, the word demure means shy reserved, quiet. And as a woman, you know, we've been doing demure. Okay. We did demure for centuries and it left us pregnant, barefoot, no rights. We couldn't even have a credit card or a bank account back then. Like it's hard as a woman to go towards the demure. And if you're a demure person, I love that for you. But I'm not. Like if you're a minimalist, love that for you. I'm not. I'm a maximalist. I'm loud. I'm spicy. I'm real. And no, we're not doing demure. As, as women, we're standing up. We're taking space. We're getting uncomfortable. And we're making others uncomfortable when we say what we need, how we need to be treated, and we're putting everything out there. Okay? So as like a woman's movement, and I know... I don't know what gender that person is, but I love them. But for I'm speaking for the straight women here, okay? We're not doing demure anymore, okay? So if you're demure, that's fine, but don't be demure. Stand up for yourself, take up space, you know, shine that light and be the star that you are. It just goes against all my beliefs, <laughs> being demure, I'm like, you mean boring? You mean like a wallflower? Like, no, 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 no. Even though you get a couple of drinks in you and then you become a, you know, someone else, be who you really want to be. That's how I feel about demure, honey. We're not doing demure anymore for the straight women. Okay? Now, last night I went to an event at recess, which is, you know, is one of my favorite vintage stores here in LA. Now, let me tell you something. Energy does not lie. And you know it. And I don't think that this society gives enough weight to energy, to vibes, to picking up what you're putting down kind of a thing. You can, it, it's, it crosses all mediums, okay? So I got an invitation for this fashion event at one of my friend's stores and I really wanted to go see my friend. She also texted me and said, are you coming? I really wasn't gonna go because I got the email on my phone. I got the invite. And the invite felt weird. It looked weird. It wasn't this store's, which is recess. Hi, how you doing? You know, it's my favorite. It wasn't their normal zhuzh, right? And so I opened up my phone and I said, oh, this feels weird. Anyways, long story short, we walked in. The people who greeted us said something weird. Then all the people around were weird. As I kept talking to more people, one was weirder than the freaking next. It was an auction house for celebrity auctions. They were putting on display 20 to 40 to $60,000 Birkins. It was so out of touch. It was so like, who, who like, I, 
I, we like vintage, two, three hundred bucks, a hundred bucks, fifty bucks. It, really? It was very just like weird. The people were weird. They were all like very aware of themselves in this very strange way. And I just had to say, if it walks like a duck, if it quacks like a duck, you got yourself a motherfucking duck. Okay. And I don't know who needs to hear that. For relationships, for emails, for invites, for this, that, it doesn't matter. If something feels off or whatever energy, or if something feels great, it's because it usually is, because the energy that's put into it is great. Or if it feels weird, it's because it's weird. So yeah, weird is as weird does. Invite was weird. People were weird. Event was weird. It was very weird. And I kept saying to my friends, like, this is weird. Is anyone else feeling this energy? It's so off. And they were like, this is very weird. So I'm just saying, go with your gut when you see something because, honey, energy is real. It can come through a phone. It could be on a piece of paper. It could be signage. It could be anything. And it's all about the energy. So I just loved that I was right. You know what I mean? You know, and you're like, oh, this is going to be fucking, this feels weird. Then you get there and you're like, well. That's what I was picking up. Good on you. Got a little got a little energy detector up in me. And it was damn spot on. So my friend and I go to Chironi. Okay. My favorite Italian restaurant. I've talked about it so much. I always talk about a lot of things. A little bit repetitive on this. I talk about Chironi. I talk about Recess. I talk about Pickwick. I talk about A Current Affair. I talk about Arcade. These are like my favorite things in LA. Oh! Well, let me finish this and then I'll go back to that. So we go to Tironi afterwards to grab a bite and another drink and kind of, you know, hang out. So we're at Tironi. We eat this fabulous meal. They sent over octopus. We had pasta. We had rolled eggplant. We had salad. It was gorgeous. Then we're leaving and I'm at the valet. And I, Tironi is my cheers. Okay. I know damn near everyone there. I know the valet by name. Like, I just love that place. And so I'm like, hey, you're looking good. You're looking fit. You're looking tan to the valet guy. And the valet guys, you look good. How are the kids? I'm like, oh, annoying as ever. You know, just having a little thing. They have outside seating. Polly Shore, he's literally right in front of us to the side, like 45 degree angle beeline shot at us. You guys look cool. <laughs> And I looked over and I was like, oh my God, that could have only been one person, which was Polly Shore. And we did look cool. Okay. She was wearing this green and white caftan gorgeousness. I was wearing this poochy 1960s dress. It was, we were dressed to a breast. And he's like, where are you guys going? You look cool. I love your guys' dresses. Who are you guys? And I was like, he was there with like a 20 year old girl. So, you know, me. I'm about six drinks in. Too much. Too much for dear Juju. Juju, you're three. Okay. Four. Mm, five. Stop. Six. You're going to say dumb shit like this. And I said, oh, you want to know why we look cool? Because we're wearing old shit. We're wearing vintage. Okay. Because it's old. We're making old cool again. And he was looking at me like, what the, this, this one is really talking back. And I said, this is from the 60s. Hers is from the 70s. It's old, okay? You're old. I'm old. The dresses are old. We're fucking cool because we're old. Got it? And then I walked around to go get in the car. So the car was kind of blocking. And then he said to my friend, tell your friend she's funny. And he was like, where are you guys going? Where are you guys going? You should hang out with us. And I was like, we got to go. We got to go. It was hilarious. I was like, did we just get hit on by Polly Shore? She was like, yeah, we did. And I was like, well, when you got it, you got it. And this is what I mean by the influencer's influencer, honey. Because even Polly Shore, who's been famous for years and seen all the people of the world, we're just there at the valet. And he's like, you guys look cool. <laughs> it was hilarious. I'm like, only in Los Angeles. And with that... I did get a little emotional. You guys know that I'm moving to London and I, my son goes to school in Altadena. So we have like a 15 to 20 minute drive out there. And this morning, because it's been hotter than Hades here in LA, it was, I, it, yeah, it could bring tears to my eyes right now. Don't do it. Don't do it. Okay. Keep it cute. I'm driving 
to Altadena, and the most beautiful is the two. If you come to LA, try to find the two highway. It's on the outskirts, like you get there, Echo Park, Silver Lake, Glassell Park, Eagle Rock. It goes up to La Cañada. It's the most beautiful highway. On the way coming back from the two, it was one of the first highways as well, and it looks like the Wizard of Oz poster. There's like all these hills, and then there's the downtown in between. And supposedly, that's what they were inspired by for the poster. It was so beautiful. My entrance, and then you get onto the freeway, and you just get up, and it's scenic. It's like huge mountain range of the Angeles Crest, green, the houses on the hill, the freeway. There's like the way the sun was hitting it, all the palm trees. I was like, oh my God, this is so beautiful. And Rocco was like, mom, are you okay? I was like, I'm fine. Because he doesn't know yet. By the way, we haven't told our kids that we're moving to London. Okay. They think that like last week was last year. They're, they're not good with time. My son's like, is it March yet? I'm like, bitch, it's September. Like they have no idea. There's still that time space thing is not really in their head yet. And I don't want to give them anxiety. Like, oh no, we're moving. I'm leaving my friends. I'm leaving my school. What's going to happen to my room? You know what I mean? I want to shorten that window and not be like, oh, it's not happening for three months. Don't worry about it. They don't even know months. So we're going to tell them like a week or two before. I have to confirm that with my therapist. But I think that's the plan. So they don't know yet. It's too soon for them to know. And I'm crying, literally getting verklempt as I'm like taking him to school. He's like, mom, are you okay? I said, yeah. He's like, why are you crying? I was like, it's just so beautiful. It's so beautiful here. We really live in such a beautiful place. <laughs> and then I started getting a little bit sad, like, Oh, the mountains, the sunshine, the palm trees, the event last night, even though it was weird, going to Tyrone where everyone knows my name, getting hit on by Polly Shore. Like, it's just, I don't know. I'm getting a little bit, I know I'm gaining a lot and it's a totally new experience and I'm so excited. But you guys, see this? L.A. all day. LA has my heart. It is tattooed on my heart. I love this city. It's wild. It's weird. It's free. It's random. It's the best. So it's going to be bittersweet. And at first I was so excited, but now it's actually hitting me that like, I won't get to see this beautiful view and sunshine. It'll be different. It'll just be different and different's good, but there is a little bit of like, okay, this is really happening. Now, speaking of I have lived in LA, what year is it, 2024? I moved here in 2023 years. And if you're coming to LA or anybody else, I'm gonna give you a best of. The hair's just like, it's wild today. She's wild. Don't mind the hair, okay? She's hungover. She's just free. The best of LA, are you ready for it? If you're a woman, Olympic Spa in Los Angeles, it's, it's the best. <laughs> Their jacuzzis, their steam room, their sauna, their Himalayan salt room. They have an oxygen room. You guys, trust me. If you like it rough and you're a masochist like me, honey, Mickey, that's all you need in your life. Okay. Mickey has the touch. You're going to be in pain. You're going to be sore. But she's going to get out all the toxins. She'll send you to God on that table. I swear to God. She gets in my armpit in some lymph node or gland or some shit. And I makes me want to cry every single time. I don't know why. It like triggers something. And I'm storing emotions in that pit. Maybe that's why they stink. Maybe that's why we where we store emotions. Energy's real, remember. My favorite restaurant in Los Angeles is Taroni on Beverly. You can always go in there and you can have a really good meal. The wine we'd had, I'm still thinking about that wine we had. It was a chilled red. It was so goddamn good. I should have bought a bottle of it. I don't know what I was thinking. Taroni on Beverly. And you might see a celebrity sighting. Polly Shore was there. You know what? One time I saw Eric Bana there. And when he stood up, I swear to God, his thighs are about as big as my rib cage. And let me tell you, I got so turned on. I was like, Eric Bana is a god. But I, I've seen a bunch of celebrities there. So it's kind of like a low key. CBS is right across the street. So it's kind of like a low key celebrity locals hang as well. Beauty, you know, Biba. Biba Los Angeles, she makes the greatest skincare 
in the world, in my opinion. And she's based out of Los Angeles in Beverly Hills with all her celebrity clients, but you can get it online. Biba Los Angeles Skincare. It's the best. Her peptides, everything, okay? So that's spa, food, skin, fun, culture. Are you ready for this? Two things that I want to talk about. First one is Cinespia at the Hollywood Forever Cemetery. You guys, if you come to LA, you have to do this. This is mandatory. You go to Hollywood Forever, you set out a picnic, and you eat and you drink and you smoke if you want, and you can be merry. And it's in the cemetery. There's tombstones everywhere. Honey, they always got a DJ, it's a party, and again, there's always celebrity sighting. Bring it on the original just played, and Kirsten Dunst was there. One time I went to ET, and Drew Barrymore came out and said something. I also saw the finale of Breaking Bad there and all the Breaking Bad cast and executive producers went as well. So it's so fun. It's so iconic. They are when the Hollywood Forever is closed, like moving Cinespia. Make sure you look at the location. It has to be the Hollywood Forever Cemetery, period. And then the row in downtown LA is also kind of a cultural thing that people are doing now. So the row used to be the old American Apparel factories. It's all these huge factories. And what's opened is a bunch of shops down at the bottom. There's so many like little oyster bars and really cool, unique shops. And the row also hosts every Sunday smorgasburg. Okay? And it is a foodie's fucking dream come true. There are tents with chefs and just coming up motherfuckers in cuisine that like come starving because they give portions and there's so much there. Look it up. Smorgasburg, LA. I think they're also in New York, but this one's hosted at the row every Sunday in downtown. And then Arcade is there. Another one of my favorite shops, you know, Recess on La Brea and the Arcade in the row. And Arcade owner also hosts Pickwick and A Current Affair. Best shopping in the world, hands down. Recess, Arcade, Pickwick, A Current Affair, period. They also go to the Greek Theater. The Greek Theater and the Hollywood Bowl, amazing. And we, all the comedians come here. So come at a time where you can see a comedy show as well. That's always so much fun. Netflix is a joke when that's on. All our favorite comedians are playing day after day, week after week. You know what I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you fashion, cultural, entertainment, and comedy. Okay. Those are the things I'm interested in. So that's my insider's guide of what I love about Los Angeles. So if you know anyone, share it or send this to them. And with that, let's get into some domestic goddessness, shall we? Okay, cooking, fig season. I am going to make this weekend, oh my God, this is the best, a fig crostata. Okay, crostatas are so easy. You basically make your dough, you put the figs in the middle with some lemon juice, some brown sugar, lemon zest, you toss it all up. It's also a galette in French, They're the same thing. Crostata in Italian, galette in French. You fold over the crust and you know what goes so good with that. My neighbor next door has a garden and in her garden, her lemon verbena is blooming out of control because it's like 107 here. And I have an ice cream maker. Lemon verbena ice cream mic drop. Like if I had a restaurant, that would be on the dessert of fig crostata and lemon verbena ice cream. You guys, have you ever had mint ice cream with where real mint was steeped in the custard? Where real lemon verbena was steeped in the custard. When you get actual herbs that are steeped in the custard, it's game over. Actual mint ice cream is so Freaking good. I don't know why people use peppermint oil. Thank you for my ice cream tasting like a toothpaste. It's so weird because when you have the mint actually steeped in the custard, it's earthy, it's more round, it gives like a hint of mint, but not so like the oil that like knocks you in your face. It is divine. So I'm gonna steep a bunch of her lemon verbena leaves in my custard and make lemon verbena ice cream. I'll serve along with my fig crostata. Cocktails. La Le Rouge. Du Bonnet. Okay? These are red wine aperitifs, and they are so lovely to transfer into fall your spritz, okay? I love spritz. I can handle a spritz. I know me on a spritz. I love, that's another thing. I would have, I think if I had a restaurant, I would also have a spritz flight, right? Like, 
10 different spritzes that are always on the menu because I love a spritz. So this is really good. So the red wine aperitif is very light, but it's beautiful to put ice in. Like you want something that kind of feels like fall, but that you could put ice in, especially if you're in Los Angeles or anywhere hot, really, let's be honest, because you're like, I want to feel like fall, but it's also 90. You know what I mean? Red wine, then Prosecco and some club soda served with an orange rind. Bob's your uncle. There's your spritz. One, two, three. I think adding some bitters kind of also gives it a little more depth and dimension. Get you a red wine aperitif, okay? This fall so you can make you a fall spritzy poo. Decor. I had a burger bash last week and I think I told you last week and I invited a new neighbor and she told me it feels so lovely and thoughtful in here. And I said, oh really? What do you think that it is that feels so thoughtful? in my decor. And she said, it's the fresh flowers and it's the candles everywhere. And you know what? That really got me thinking. It doesn't matter what your decor is, right? If you're a minimalist, if you're a maximalist, if you're neoclassical, modern, mid-century, Swedish, uh, cottage, Nancy Myers vibes, it doesn't matter what it is. Fresh flowers and candles are the decor pair that transcends any space with any style to the next level of sophistication nation. So just as a decor reminder, and I want you, you should actually do this as a test, okay? Here's a little uh, PSA test trial, if you will. Dear Juju, try it. I want you to, you could go on Amazon, whatever, get you some vintage candlesticks or new ones, whatever your style is. Get you some candlesticks. And in every room, I want you to put fresh flowers and a candle, okay? Do it when you have people over. Right? Like, because if you're just like, you can do it by yourself. But honestly, it's a little bit of a waste. When eyes come over, when things feel fresh, and it doesn't even have to be smelly candles. They could be pillar candles. Like, if people are sensitive to smell or if you're serving something that's uh, food-wise, you don't always want to do scented candles because it gets it breaks up the palate for the food. So it could just be, these are just white pillar candles. You could get white candles. Put them in every room in a very thoughtful place. So what I do when I have parties is this dining table kind of, I like to do buffet table so that people can go outside, so you can hang out in the living room, so you can hang out in the dining room, you can hang out in the kitchen, but this is where the table's set. So I bring the candles here, but then I have little candles all around and big fresh flowers. Then in the kitchen by the sink, I put my fresh flowers. I also put a candle on my island. Then in the dining room in front of my window, I put big bouquet of fresh flowers and then candles kind of every so often where I can find them. And then I even do it in my entryway. Don't forget about the foyer. Don't forget about the bathroom, especially if you have people coming over. Even if it's just like four people over, your powder room and your bathroom, put a candle, put fresh flowers, okay? Put a hand towel that looks nice so that they're ready to go. And they go in and they go, oh, this is so thoughtful. And then your house feels really warm and cozy and thoughtful and they don't know why. And they're like, hmm, I think it's because you've put fresh flowers out for us and candles and made it feel so cozy. So that's my decor advice. It transcends all style. And if you've never done it, do it. Next time you have people over, a dinner party, a birthday, it doesn't matter. Candles and fresh flowers in every room, including the pisser, okay? And then you'll just have a cozy, thoughtful house where people go, I really like going over there and I don't exactly know why. Well, it's because I'm, I made a vibe for you, honey. You're stepping into the vibe. Now let's move on to some Q&A with some TNA, shall we? Oh my God, dear Juju, can gorditas wear caftans or would we look too wide in them? This is an actual question, okay? It's not me. Yes, absolutely. And especially, but you have to be mindful of where your thinnest part is. Belt it or like mine, mine have a hip hem. And the hip hem is gonna give you still a silhouette so you can not just look like you're in a bag, you know? So yes, absolutely you can. I think that they're fabulous, but I would belt it. It doesn't matter what your waist size is. A belt still makes you feel pulled together and it will make you look like you don't have a sack on, you know? Dear Juju, where do you get your lingerie from? Agence Provocateur. Okay. I think this is one. See this one? That green Agent Provocateur. And the head one is in London. Agent Provocateur. It's pricey, but it's French lace. 
it is the best. So when you want lingerie for a show, for a birthday, for a special occasion, Agent Provocateur is the only way to go. Favorite sex toy or lube? Ooh, I have just a vibrator, you know, just like a normal, I just have a normal vibrator and lube, coconut oil. Oh my God, come on. It's an antimicrobial, so good for your vagina. And it really helps when you're going down there on him as well. I mean, it could be her too because it kind of tastes good. And you're getting in your good fats, okay? Dear Juju, so a friend of mine called me out on sending out my own invites for a baby shower. She was under the impression that my future mother-in-law would be doing that for me. Now, this isn't completely untrue as it was initially her idea to throw me a baby shower, but very quickly it seemed things wouldn't be planning out the way out in a way that would bring me the most joy in the special occasion. I'm not exactly hard to please, but there is a clear taste level difference that I don't want to be ungrateful at my own baby shower. Feel you. So I decided to take things into my own hands. Am I doing too much? Should I have just let other people plan something that is so special to me? Fear you're being selfish, girl. This is your baby, your shower, your time. Okay, you're going to go through nine months. If you want to host the most fabulous baby shower, I don't care what traditions say. Fuck traditions, okay? Mother-in-law, nope, your taste ain't cute. Bye-bye. I threw my own baby shower. You know I did. I threw my own fucking baby shower. And if your friend is feeling some kind of way, you need to tell her that your body is being taken over for nine months. It's so exciting and it's so special and it's something that you want to do. Fuck that. Period. The end paragraph. You're being selfish. Oh, get ready. You're about to be a mom. Your selfishness days are over. So have one last hurrah. Because, honey, you're going to be put last. I mean, you still need to carve out time for yourself and we'll get into that. But, girl... No. The short answer is no. Secondly, if your friend kind of made you feel a certain way, you can just tell her, this is what my therapist told me that has helped me so much on dealing with people that have opinions. You say, listen, thank you so much for caring about me enough because you probably don't want me to be stressed on my special day and you care about, you know, you throwing me something or this, that, and the other. And I really appreciate that. So I just want to thank you for caring and loving me so much. But this is my decision and that's what I've decided to do and where I'm going. I've put it in my sleep. I'm so excited. So if you really love and care about me, you will let me do what I feel is right for me and my family. And I've had to tell that to some of my siblings, my family members, when they need to sit down after they've given advice that was unwarranted or felt a certain way. So that's a good way to kind of handle it where you're like, back up, bitch, with a smile. <laughs> okay? Throw it. Show it. Own it. Cheers to yourself. Cheers to you. You know what? No one's going to do it better than you. And yeah, how awful is that to sit at your baby shower and go, oh my God, hi, welcome. The flowers are awful. It was my mother-in-law. So the cake is disgusting. Like, fuck that. You're like, nope, I'm calling the shots. This is my show. I'm the mom. I'm running things. You know what? It's actually the first step in your motherhood where you're like, I'm running things now. <laughs> Welcome to the queendom, honey. I'm the mother of this ship. Get on board or get the fuck off. You can tell I'm spicy and I'm hungover, but good for you. I would confront her and tell her, thank you so much, but no thank you. This is what's happening. And if you really cared, you'd be happy for me. All right, that's the podcast. I have a date with a friend who's going to help me with London and I'm going to be five minutes late and I've already pushed it 15 minutes, so I got to go. You're a fucking star. Candles, flowers, show me. I want to see it, okay? I want to see you have a thoughtful place. And fuck being demure. I love you and I'm out. Mwah!